Uh, my name is Andrew Lim. I'm the physician assistant for the Division of Orthopedic Surgery here at Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center. It's located in Toronto and I work as part of the orthopedic trauma team. And do you work um, in one subspecialty or with one physician or how does it, how does it work? So my group is a little bit different. Um, I guess in many ways it's very similar to other hospital groups in the sense that there are going to be multiple surgeons. In my, my institution we have 16 orthopedic surgeons. Um, and uh, for spine surgeons and I work with you know to varying degrees all of these surgeons and help out with their patients um, they they will have different specialties or areas of, of expertise uh, in particular I work with a few specialists who, who look into soft tissue injuries and the, and the shoulder and we also have the other specialties that are exclusive to foot and ankle and so it's a little bit of everything can you describe what you do in inpatient and board management yeah, so uh, generally speaking, my day will start out with uh, touching base with the uh, team leaders or the charge nurses in each unit that I work with. Uh, whenever I have patients around, I'll chat with them, see if there are any concerns overnight with patients or if there's anything I can do to help facilitate their care and uh, their eventual discharge plan. Um, a lot of the times I will actually speak with the nursing staff themselves and say, hey, is there anything I can help out with? Or actually more often than not, they will come to me and say, hey, this patient has this medication that's ordered. I was wondering if you could clarify this or if you can update the family. And so a lot of my days will be um, held either chatting with the nursing staff, the patients, their families, or the members of the allied health team. So what impact does having a PA in the inpatient ward have on staff, on patients, on nursing? I think um, for the staff um, perspective, I, I think it really makes a huge difference in terms of improving patient care, both in a patient flow setting, making sure that we're able to um, meet these patients, uh, care for them, and help facilitate this, their discharge in a fairly timely manner. Uh, from the, per the patient perspective, I found that I've had a lot of great feedback because um, it's really tough for the resident physicians to be able to spend as much time as they can because they do have other duties and responsibilities, not just to that patient, but to all other patients. And that frees up the opportunity for me to step in and uh, take a little bit more time to go over the patient and their surgery. Gives the patient a little bit more of uh, satisfaction in knowing what has been done and gives them that confidence that, hey, this person is looking out for me. And so I'm, I'm in a good place. I'm happy to kind of uh, carry on with my care. Can you describe what you do for uh, call or consult? So I also take consults uh, for the emergency department, both through the outpatient emergency setting as well as with the uh, traumas that we come in that come into our hospital. And um, both their approaches are, are a little bit different. Um, for both of them, of course, with the traumas, it's a more of a higher acuity setting. So we will have patients who come in uh, through EMS or Orange, and with very large, often multiply injured. Um, patients um, and we kind of facilitate that uh, ATLS protocol making sure that I as part of the orthopedic surgery group assist and help out with assessing the patient making sure that we identify these orthopedic issues as soon as possible and temporizing them or treating them right away. In the, uh, in the outpatient consult uh, aspect of it in the emergency department it's a lot more of uh, trying to navigate with the emergency physicians, see, hey, is this a, something that needs to be addressed as an inpatient in hospital? Is this something that needs to be admitted? This is something that can be referred out. Um, and we help, uh, we work closely with the emergency physicians to kind of help them out. Uh, luckily, we also have the um, expertise of other services so we can kind of collaborate and figure out what is the best disposition plan for the patient. And luckily, we also have um, anesthesiologists who help facilitate um, care in terms of uh, providing anesthetics for reductions of shoulders and wrists and elbows, things that uh, might need a little bit more expertise. So what are some um, common conditions you get called down for and what procedures do you do in those instances? Um, and as with uh, any aging population, we will have a lot of consultations. Uh, essentially, they're direct admissions for the hip fracture population as well as the um, insufficiency fractures or the uh, uh, pubic rami fractures that come in. So these pelvic fractures definitely, uh, these are the patients who oftentimes so uh, we try to mobilize, get them going and hopefully to home, but oftentimes we will admit. Uh, fairly common are the more complex uh, wrist fractures or um, 
ankle fractures that need a little bit of extra help with reduction. And you get, you know, the, a couple of the, um, the weird and wonderful. So sometimes, you know, you come in expecting a, a normal shoulder uh, that's been dislocated, but all of a sudden you have both a fracture and a dislocation. And it's a bit of a different dislocation. It's an inferior one or whatnot. And it's very interesting because I almost feel that there's so many different orthopedic issues that arise and we get called down to so many that the weird and wonderful suddenly becomes routine and the things that we read about in textbooks are actually there in front of you. So it's very, it's very satisfying. So apart from the fracture dislocation of the shoulder, what are some other uh, weird and interesting uh, reductions that you've done? Um, so it, this actually occurred fairly recently in the trauma bay. We had a patient who unfortunately was involved in an accident where he had his entire foot uh, rolled over by, I think it was an 18-wheeler. And so he actually had uh, what seemed like a fairly innocent injury at the time on initial clinical examination. He just had a very swollen foot. He just had to take some x-rays and it turned out that the uh, proximal interphalangeal joints for D1 to 5 on his right foot were all dislocated one over. So it looked like they were in the right position but just one over. So D1 was where D2 is and etc. And so it was interesting because I've never had to just kind of pop each and every single one into position. Um, it wasn't very challenging or whatnot, but I, I did find it was interesting. And um, you do these reductions yourself? I do. I do them with the assistance of the anesthesiologist or uh, trauma team leader uh, who will assist with facilitating the anesthetic. Um, and oftentimes I will not be the only one there and from the orthopedic group. I will often be uh, playing backup for the uh, first year or second year residents. Um, but I found that over the years, uh, as I start to grow into this position and feel more confident, confident in my abilities, um, I do a lot more teaching and the first years and second years will come to me and say, I've never done this reduction. Can you show me how or can you do this with me? And it's always been a great experience for the both of us. Are you involved in fracture clinic or other outpatient settings? Yeah, so, um, my role has been defined more as a kind of a, almost like a triage setting wherein my priority has always been to addressing the acute patient care concerns as well as the traumas that kind of tie uh, hand in hand. And then as we kind of fall down the algorithm for the less acute things that I try to manage, um, you know, I try to tidy everything up and when I find that um, you know, everyone is all settled in, everyone has a plan, or there's really nothing else that's pending, then I'll kind of uh, wander my way down to the fracture clinic and see if there's anything I can help out with. Oftentimes, um, I'll be asked to come into a fracture clinic, especially when we're shorthanded residents, and so long as it doesn't interfere with the rest of my duties in clinical practice, I'm happy to see patients uh, both in the fracture clinic as well as in our consultation clinic uh, just next door. What are some of the procedures uh, that you do in fracture clinic? So a lot of it um, has to do with uh, helping with reductions and re-reductions. We will often have patients who come in to our fracture clinic uh, from either from emergency or some other facility that um, have reductions that maybe uh, need to be redone or revised to an extent, uh, especially because uh, part of our assessment is to also take down everything. And so while they may have had a great reduction, everything looked good, unfortunately sometimes we needed to take everything down just to make sure that there was nothing else that was missing um, or that we needed to collect more information and then we'd have to redo it. And I'd be assisting with the orthopedic technicians, helping them to uh, both set as well as uh, to apply these casts and splints. So you work in a lot of different areas. Um, I do. Is it one area one day a week or just depending on need? Like what does a typical week look like for you? Uh, so generally every day is about the same in the sense that I will float around and so what I try to do is I touch base with the nursing staff uh, for, for the two main units that I work primarily in. So for the orthopedic unit on D5 as well as the trauma unit on C5 and uh, depending on what we discussed in Hanover that morning, I might wander over to the emergency to address something or um, the critical care unit but uh, oftentimes it'll be in those areas and that's where I kind of follow along and see, make sure that all the patients that I'm responsible for um, have you know, all their blood work updated and have 
been seen by either myself or one of the orthopedic residents and have a plan set in place because as part of a large hospital, you want to facilitate that discharge as soon as you can, uh, just for safe, timely, and you know, for bed space issues. What do you enjoy about ortho? Like what, what gets you excited in the morning when you wake up? It has to be the traumas. I, uh, you know, as, as bad as it sounds, I, I do enjoy these multi-system traumas that come in because it, it adds to that complexity of the, the case and being able to see a patient coming in with all these injuries and I'm trying to problem solve and figure out, you know, how, how can I help this patient as quickly as possible and make sure that they have the best possible outcome. And I think uh, a lot of that um, really does resonate with me. In orthopedics in itself, I think it's a very um, satisfying in the sense that you do get that instant gratification of, hey, this bone is sticking out of the skin, and you put it back, and all of a sudden the pain is improved, the patient feels better, and even though they're still going for OR, at least they are in a better position than when they first came in. And it's that sort of feeling that you can't really you know, get anywhere else. And what are some of the challenges with orthopedics? I think with orthopedic surgery in general, the, the challenges mainly lie in the scope of practice and the role clarity because of course you also want to work with your, your colleagues, with your physicians and with your resident physicians in particular um, and sometimes it, it makes it a little bit tough when they have never worked with a physician assistant before and they're not sure as to what your scope is and how you're able to help them and in many ways they are so unsure that they either take everything upon themselves and it makes their life you know, quite harder or they feel that they can delegate anything and everything to me which you know of course makes my life harder and also takes away from from them because they don't know how to fully utilize a PA and I think this is something that is actually a a skill that needs to be developed, being able to work in tandem with another colleague. And I think that it's something that, you know, with every block that comes in, you can run into these challenges.